Hey, this is John Lee Dumas of EO Fire, and welcome to Master Leadership. Great leaders ask great questions, and this podcast takes you on a journey to master leadership with questions that matter to leaders who matter with your host, Lily Sinabria. Hi, this is Lily, and welcome to Master Leadership, where we connect with leaders worldwide to gain insights on important topics to help us on our journey towards greater significance. If you would like to participate as a guest, or if you have a question that you would like to ask a guest, go to masterleadership.org for more information. Alex Membrillo is the founder and CEO of Cardinal Digital Marketing based in Atlanta, Georgia. Launched in 2009, Cardinal has become a leading digital marketing agency. They have been named to Atlanta Business Chronicle's Paysetter list. The company has also been named multiple years to the Inc. 5000 list of fastest growing privately held U.S. companies. In addition, Cardinal has been selected by Atlanta Business Chronicle as one of the best places to work in Atlanta. Alex's accolades includes being named Digital Marketer of the Year by Technology Association of Atlanta, the Small Business Person of the Year, Rising Star, presented by Atlanta Business Chronicle, and was named to the inaugural list of Georgia State University's 40 Under 40 list of alumni. As a leader, Alex values people as Cardinal Digital Marketing's most important resource. Alex understands that a well-oiled machine works best when each individual part is working to its full potential. He loves meeting with peers to discuss innovative ideas and brainstorm ways to make their organization even better. He never settles on past successes. He always pushes his team to get to the next level. Alex has developed an extremely positive and collaborative work environment. Additionally, he also has a transparent leadership style, which has generated confidence from his team. Alex lives his passion, which is truly helping businesses grow. He also has the mantra that at Cardinal, they are setting the industry standard for ethical digital marketing practices. Our interview will begin right after messages from our sponsors. If you want to make money and change lives by selling your knowledge online, do not launch an online course. Only 6% of those are ever completed. Create instead your own branded app and launch the ultimate learning experience that sells. Passion.io is a drag and drop platform where you create interactive content to sell using your own branded app. Forget any tech hassles. You deserve a platform that makes it easy. You can move your existing clients, you can reach new clients, or you can even swap your online course for something that actually works. Delight clients with downloadable and even live content. You can trigger instant action using push notifications, generate more revenue with single touch payment, and you can stream across all devices. Best yet, try it for free for 14 days. Go to masterleadership.org forward slash passion and get started today. Welcome, Alex Membrillo. How are you? I'm so good. This is fun. Thanks for having me, Lily. You know, your energy is lovely. <laughs> I'm so tired. I drank a lot of coffee. The baby's kept us up all night, so I'm oh. trying my best. Okay, so hopefully <laughs> you're ready to pour into our listeners. I am, man. This is what recharges me. You know, the family's awesome. Usually recharges me as well. Last night they were up. So this recharges me. I get to talk about business and share some of the mistakes I've made and hopefully spare someone from something that I've done. Beautiful. That's what we want to hear. So tell us a bit about your path to leadership and what you're doing now. Yeah. So it was accidental. I didn't strive to become a leader. I did go to school for management, but I never aspired to be a manager. I think it just seemed like an easy degree to get. And I didn't want to do marketing, but I ended up being in marketing. So I graduated from Georgia State University in 09. And the day after my 12 year old was born, we started cold calling businesses. So I was 24, I had a newborn and we started cold calling businesses, trying to help them with their local marketing because I had seen businesses get taken advantage of, including my father's who ran a little startup, got taken advantage of by an SEO company. So that pissed me off. And so we started Cardinal and uh, we started cold calling and then it just grew little by little, uh, really exploded in the last year and a half. But the first decade was 
lots of mistakes, lots of screw ups, lack of definition of what we were trying to do. And I don't know if I've ever been a leader. I wake up every morning, Lily, and I look around, we have 60 people and I'm like, why the hell are they following me? I don't know if that's the right word, but why, why do they trust me? You know, I have a super imposter syndrome every morning. So I guess I'm a leader by default. And now I'm trying to get more serious and help them in a bigger company way. So I'm still learning on how to do it. So I don't know. I hope they think highly of me, but it is scary when you become a leader and you never ask for it. I can tell you off the bat, you have a great sense of humor and you're transparent, which is key. For me, transparency just brings up a lot of trust. I think so. I don't take myself seriously. I take the work we do seriously and I give my oath, my name's on all of the contracts. So I take it very seriously, the work that we're going to help clients grow because we started because we didn't want to see small businesses get taken advantage of. So I take it very seriously, but I don't take myself seriously. We have a motto around the office that says flock first, because we're cardinals, we call them flock. No egos, no bullshit. And they see me make fun of myself every day, every interaction. And so they don't take themselves seriously either. And I tell them everything on my mind. If you follow me on LinkedIn, you see, I talk about being to rehab and having kids really young and being on unemployment, starting this company at $200 a week in government stipends. Like I talk about everything because I think that is in short supply in this world. And it's weird. It's weird that everyone puts on a face in the morning. It's, it's weird to me. Well, you are refreshing, Alex, I have to tell you. And here's another thing, flock first. Mm -hmm. It says to me that you value the people that you work with. So there's obviously a connection between your name, Cardinal. Tell us about your organization. Why that name? Yeah. So we wanted to take businesses in the right direction. So Cardinal North is absolute North. It's, and so it's actually supposed to be the direction, but like we figured nobody's going to get the compass thing with Cardinal because it's a bird. And then a bird swooped in and landed on my patio. I said, we're Cardinal. We're going to go with the bird. But if you look in the logo, it's compass points are the two bird head points. So yeah, it's kind of taking people in the right direction. And obviously we have our icon, the Cardinal and, uh, and it's cool. Our house is full of Cardinals. You, you would not be mistaken. I know you've landed at a nest. <laughs> so you are a digital marketing organization, a marketing organization that has high integrity is really important. So how can we connect with you? You can find me on LinkedIn or you can just search for digital marketing agency or healthcare marketing agency anywhere you are in the country. If we don't show up on Google, we are not good at what we do. You should not hire us. We are a digital marketing agency for high growth healthcare groups. So over the years, we really niched down more and more into our target vertical, which is healthcare. It used to scare me to narrow our positioning. And over the years, I have found that the more narrow the positioning, the greater the expertise you and your team have. And the more pricing flexibility you have, the more profitable you become and the more leads that come to us. So if you're looking for Cardinal, go search for healthcare marketing and you'll find us there. Fantastic. So, you know, speaking of healthcare, we're hopefully recovering from the global pandemic COVID-19. I'm certain that you've learned a couple of things. Can you share any quotes, advice, or practice that has helped you most during crisis? Yeah. You know, Lily, I think it's a really cool question. When I was younger and Cardinal was in its first few years, I react to crisis with panic. <laughs> I was not a good leader. I would be the guy on the front lines, like running around with my rifle, probably shooting my foot off. And I realized that that's not helpful. So in the early parts of the pandemic, when stuff was hitting the fan, I was calm and positive and always very optimistic with the team. Even if I wasn't sure that things were going to turn out well. All of our clients were pausing their marketing. I was scared shitless. We lost 25% of our revenue overnight, but I was always optimistic with them. I found out about the PPP. I said, we're going to make it through this. We're going to go on the offensive and go hire people that are being laid off by other firms. And we're going to grow coming out of this. It was a big roll of the dice, but I have found that when things hit the fan, we tend to overreact and nothing is ever as bad as we think it is or as good as we think it is. And so I've tried to stay more even keeled and rely on my leadership team to tell me if things are really as bad as I think they are. <laughs> and they don't have the affiliation with Cardinal of being an owner. I have all of this extra weight on me. This is the family legacy. This is our whole net worth. They don't have all that. So they have a calmer head and they tell me, Alex, we're going to be okay. And then I say, we're going to be okay. Let's go forward. And so I learned to lead with a cool head, even when things are crazy and always be optimistic. People in a pandemic your employees included, need to see a beacon of light at all times. 
because their lives are very dark right now. We are in 2022 and we are still in this shit. They need to see optimism every single morning when they talk to their leadership because they're not seeing it on the news and they can't go outside and they can't go to school. So they need to see it from you. They need to see it from all of us. So you got to be positive, even if you're not feeling it that day. I love how you rely on your team to gauge what's going on. That says a lot about you. And here's what I always listen for. And one of the things is humility. And most people who are humble don't really realize that. But humility and wisdom are very, very connected. I believe that that's where you know your leadership rises and also how you trust your team. And when we trust, it creates that foundation that's so important for good yep. organizations to thrive. And so, yeah. And you know, the one thing I learned, and I know you don't want me to talk right now, but the one thing that the trust came from <laughs> is I actually brought on a team that didn't say yes to me. And this is a big thing that I've learned over the last 12 years, I had the yes team and I thought that was trust because we all broke out. And then I found people that didn't agree and didn't have the same backgrounds and thought and looked very different than me. And because there's so much friction on the team, good friction, I do trust them because they don't think and they won't just say yes to everything. So I think it's really key to bring on people of different genders and backgrounds onto all leadership and management teams, because it really does create a high-performing group. And you can go to them and say, how should I be feeling here? And trust that response. I love that. And it's funny how you say, I don't want you to talk. Of course I want you to talk. <laughs> Interrupt, chime in. I don't care. I love, love, love it. Now, right, okay, uh, Alex, as a lifelong learner, what are you learning right now? So Lily, like I got really good at running a three or $4 million company with 15, 20 people. Small family. I knew all of them intimately. We we're all in each other's weddings. That's easy to build that culture because they just need to be around me. I don't have to define the culture. I don't need management teams with coaching and training and performance reviews. I don't know how to do all that, the latter stuff I just mentioned. And so I'm trying to learn I've with CEOs of $10 million plus companies that have built all these things. And I'm thankful to them for having me around. And I'm trying to learn how to run a professional organization that's professionally managed and has all of those structures. Now, whether I'm that interested in all of those things and would rather just go create a new business. I think I get more energy out of the fun creation, but I want to learn this skill. I think it's important and the team needs it. And so I'm doing the best I can to learn how to be a real CEO. I have to tell you, you're doing a great job because you're asking <laughs> the right questions too. So that's important. Thanks. So when you think of leadership today, Alex, what most concerns you and what are you most hopeful about? I'll tell you what concerns me because I saw it live in, in action a few weeks ago. Speaking about that CEO group, I went and met with a few because we're all trying to form groups. And it ends up a lot of these groups are eight white dudes in their 40s and they all get together. And I've been in previous CEO groups. I benefit the most from people with very different backgrounds, women, people of color. They're the ones that pushed back and told me about their upbringings and taught me how to treat women in the workplace. And these guys, I think a lot of leadership teams, they go and recruit buddies. They want buddies. They want go ahead and do it because I'm going to recruit people of different backgrounds and we're going to kick your ass because it makes for a way more effective company. We have grown tremendously. It's because we have serious people with different backgrounds that aren't there to be buddies. We're there to grow a business and challenge each other and grow. And you don't do that with buddies. And so that's the biggest threat I see to leadership is this constant. The guys are just ganging up with more guys. Y'all keep doing that. Y'all keep doing that. We're going to lap you. I love that. You have won my heart, Alex. I'm just speaking of what I've seen be really effective because I've had the all male leadership teams where we all broke out and it was really fun. And then we ended up laying people off in the company almost went under. So I chose to not go that path the second time and we've grown like crazy, very successful. So y'all do what you need to do. We're going to take a different route. Wisdom, my friend, wisdom. I love it. All right. So here's an option. You can take a question from a former guest, or you can share a challenge or a struggle that you learned from. Let's take a question. Let's take a question. Oh, all right. So I'm going to feel like, you... I feel like I'm on who wants to be a millionaire. All right, Regis, I'm going to take a question and then I might <laughs> call my wife down and, and get my lifeline. It's your lifeline. All right. So Yarrow Starrick, who is also a digital nomad, he wants to know, what do you see as the future for your content marketing strategies? Oh, gosh. Social and video. It used to be easy. All I had to do was show up on Google. When you go and search healthcare marketing, you see we're usually one or two and that'd be enough. Usually people end up there, but that's not how they discover you. That's not how they end up trusting you. And so telling your story through video on social in creative ways 
is really critical. And I thought, you know, people started saying that five years ago. I thought it was bullshit. Video got it. Social got it. It's really true. It's really been impactful. We keep getting leads and clients that say, yeah, I saw your case study video on the ad on Facebook. Then I watched your podcast videos on LinkedIn. Then I did a search finally. Then my friend sent me an email that you were cold emailing with helpful content. So B2B, very tricky, very long-winded, very expensive, very hard to tell what works but you have to do it all, including great podcasts like this to go from stuck to extraordinary lead pipeline. No way around it. So here's something I learned from Yarrow not long ago. He told me about web three and I'm like, what the hell is that? I don't know what that is. A lot of people don't know what that is. <laughs> so research it. Yeah. I don't know. Web three. It's, I it's, think it's this dark social thing that people are talking about. It's all the places people are finding you that you're not aware of the podcasts and Facebook groups and stuff like that. I think that's what it refers to. I don't think it's augmented in virtual reality and stuff. So yeah. I don't know. I know what's practical. I don't get into buzzwords and shit like that because I can send people down rabbit holes. Tons of agencies will be like, yeah, we're getting you on TikTok. It doesn't work, guys. Move the fuck on. All right. So as a listener of this podcast, Alex, what is a question that you would like a future leadership guest to respond to? Like, what are you curious about? Right now, what I'm trying to learn is how to keep engagement with remote teams that are hybrid. I think fully remote companies understand how to do it better because they never meet in person. I think fully HQ teams, like we're all in Atlanta, know how to do it because you can meet in person. How do you do it when you're a hybrid? How do you build HR? Should it be remote? How do you defy everybody for events or is virtual cookie zooms and murder mysteries enough? I'm really questioning it. I'm worried that we're not going to do it well. I'm worried we'll lose the culture, the momentum. I don't know, the unquantifiable juju that I built over the last 12 years. So I'm nervous about that. I'd love for someone to tell me that has a hybrid remote workforce, how they've kept the culture together and what practical things they do. How often are they doing events? Are they flying people in? Do they just accept that people will be less sticky and that's okay? I, I don't know. That's a great question. Um, so tune in because I will be asking this. Okay, now, is, well, there, is there anything else you'd like to share with our listeners? You got a lot of people listening to this that are trying to become extraordinary leaders. This is the first step, right? Is listening to podcasts and reading books. The second step is to get your ass moving. I spent so many years of the last years, like just reading. I've read every business book I felt like at Barnes and Noble. And at some point, you just have to put practice into action. So get moving. Don't be afraid of mistakes. You're going to make plenty of them. They're all recoverable because we're not handing out cancer. You're going to be okay. You can always walk back a business decision. Even if your business goes under, you start another one. So it's not all fatal. Only quitting is. And so just get moving. Start moving. Start moving. After you listen to this podcast, go get moving. Okay. Don't pick up another book. Let's get going. And also I love having great conversations. So ping me on LinkedIn. Just look for Alex Membrio. Good luck spelling it, but I'm probably the only one in the country. So if you, if you can figure it out, you'll find me. Uh, I'll just make it easy. M-E-M-B-R-I-L-L-O. Okay. Yeah. My All wife right. calls, my wife calls me embryo. That's what she thought I said on the first date. So I'm in her phone as embryo. I said, oh my God. I love you. And yet you, yeah, you won her heart. <laughs> Do you have a website? I'm sure you do. Yeah, yeah. We Everything goes to their website, cardinaldigitalmarketing.com, cardinaldigitalmarketing.com. All right. So, Alex, thank you so much for adding value to me and to our listeners. It's been fun. Yeah, no worries. This was good. If anybody wants to ping me, feel free to reach out. Keep listening. Go take action. You guys are going to crush it. Appreciate y'all listening in. All right. Take care. Have a great day. In closing, here's a quick message. Coaching is the art of influence that underpins leadership in the 21st century. It is the very thing that can get you from being stuck to being extraordinary. So go to masterleadership.org and sign up to get a free coaching session. Until next time, continue to ignite that leader in you.